let's switch gears a little bit. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to Helena and let's make the transition from Bev to ramucirumab and, right. and give us your thought. And that's obviously gastric has been an area of huge success for this drug, right? That's right. So there were two large studies, uh, the REGARD and RAINBOW study, uh, that really validated, as I uh, mentioned earlier, our observation that in gastric cancer, VEGF inhibition is, a, is, a, is an important strategy. Uh, and these trials were uh, randomized phase three trials of ramucirumab, which is a monoclonal antibody that targets VEGF R2, the actual receptor, and uh, both uh, as a single agent and in combination with paclitaxel, uh, there was a overall survival and progression-free survival benefit, which really led to expedited approval of this uh, medicine in patients with second line uh, gastric cancer. Uh, and the reason why it gained such expedited approval is because unlike lung cancer where there is a plethora of you know, biomarkers and targeted agents and you know, it's almost impossible to demonstrate overall survival benefit in EG yeah. farm and lung cancer. It's like, you know, her two positive breasts, they just live forever and do well, knock on wood, it's great. But in gastric, that's not the case. It's the, the at least before Ramasurumab came on the market in second line setting, uh, the landscape was bare. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the trials, uh, you know, uh, with mTOR inhibition and, and, and others, uh, the tyrosine kinase inhibitors have failed. Um, and so ramucirumab really opened the door and uh, you know, reignited the interest for this um, pathway again in gastric. So had, in, and forgive me for not knowing this, but in, in, that, in, in those trials, had patients received any anti-angiogenic agents before that, or they no. were na naive? No, they were all naive because yeah. bevacizumab is not uh, FDA approved and you know, never, yeah. and not used anywhere right. really in the world. In gastric in gastric. So these patients who progressed on usually five, a few platinum therapies are a mainstay of treatment. And uh, these patients were carefully selected. If you look at your at the clinical trial enrollment, at least for the single agent study, the romasermab uh, as a single agent, these are not, you know, your just average gastric uh, cancer patient who comes in. They excluded people with, uh, uh, you know, large volume peritoneal carcinomatosis, mm -hmm. you know, patients with any risk of serious bleeding. Mm -hmm. uh, on average, it was a younger patient population. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but in that patient population who are considered to be perhaps, you know, better players in general right. because peritoneal carcinomatosis is a terribly negative, yeah. uh, you know, uh, prognostic factor, uh, those patients, did better with mm -hmm. ramucirumab, uh, and at least it really uh, had a, a disease stabilization benefit. Yeah. As a single agent, the GFR2 inhibition won't make your tumor shrink, uh, but uh, it, it really does stabilize it. But I, you know, as I say to my patients, uh, I don't have to shrink your tumor to make you live longer. Stable is good. It. That's <laughs> my Stop mantra. <laughs> from, from no change is yeah. a good thing. Eddie, you... you Can you, I add Oh, yes, yes, Sorry. please, yes. So, uh, and, and just to uh, take off where Elena um, started, the very interesting thing in gastric cancer is that in the last two years, it's become now with, you know, clinical trial evidence proven that second-line chemotherapy is a standard option in the median survival with second line therapy is five months versus three months or so with best supportive care. And remarkably, that's what we saw in the REGARD study, exactly the same thing. So with a non-cytotoxic drug, uh, ramucirumab in this selected population, we saw the exact same benefit as you do with chemotherapy. So then the question is, you know, do you want chemotherapy to shrink the tumor? Um, you know, so patients have choices, basically. We can, we can choose a non-toxic, relatively non-toxic drug in the second line setting to give you the same median survival benefit, or we could, you know, choose chemotherapy with ramucirumab if we wanted to get a higher response rate for, you know, symptom control or things like that. Absolutely. Has it has it been proven that adding ramucirumab to chemotherapy is a better option in these in this population? So there was no one's ever done a trial of ramucirumab versus taxol ramucirumab, but the trial of paclitaxel versus paclitaxel ramucirumab has shown really, uh, you know, I would say clinically meaningful response rate. Yeah. And that's where I think the excitement lies. Okay. I think very few patients, at least, you know, in my practice, would. Uh, go on single agent ramucirumab at this point uh, because usually they're fitter, you know, they're more motivated, they do have symptoms. Uh, and in second line uh, therapy, 
the combination of paclitaxel romaserumab is really uh, the mainstay of therapy. And then, you know, again, extrapolating from other, uh, you know, disease types, colon cancer particularly, you know, the hypothesis is continuation mm -hmm. of romaserumab beyond progression, an important factor. Mm -hmm. And I, I do tend to believe of that, you know, flare event that you can uh, per perhaps get with stopping uh, angiogenesis uh, inhibition. Uh, and so, uh, again, it's an open-ended question that, that, that trials have not been done yet.